Hi, welcome for our RTL online trainings. This is Chandra. I am here to explain about uh, HCM employee hiring and also which table this information stores in the database tables. And what is the primary key? And what are the tables we are supposed to join to get employee details? That's what we are going to discuss. And also what are the who columns we have in uh, Fusion applications? That's what we are going to discuss here it is. Okay, so we already know that uh, employee hiring process. We'll just take a new employee here. Uh, before we enter into the session, if anyone is not subscribed, please subscribe to get the latest updates about the cloud training. And please refer anyone is looking for the training on cloud technologies and placement will be available here it is. We are based out in Hyderabad. So you can find our address and other information here itself. Communication channel and everything you can find here it is. Okay. Let's go to the application. Make sure that you have the role called human resource specialist role, then you can hire employee. So I'm hiring a new employee. Let's go to new person. We'll hire employee and we'll see which table stores information, how we can write the query to access this data. This is required even for functional consultant also nowadays. And uh, uh, because uh, we are supposed to have some technical knowledge when we are going ahead with uh, HCM as functional, right? So let me take here uh, Mukun Ali. And prefix putting it as doctor suffix and uh, honors uh, preferred name and uh, these all are general options let me take it as uh, 99 date of birth national identifiers click next button here Now we completed hiring process successfully here. Once we complete this hiring process, now we'll see the database table, which table this information is stored. So we need a person number before we go for search. Let's search this employee from person management first. Now go to person management here. This is what uh, person number, double one, double two, three. Let's, uh, if we want to access the database in Fusion Applications uh, SAS model, we have to go to tools menu, reports and analytics. Then what happened? When we click on this, it will open this window here. We have to go to create. We'll be navigating into this option. Let me show you. When we click on this reports and analytics, it will enter into the BI environment here. We'll be selecting a browse catalog, click on this. 
then we can see that business intelligence that will be populated. And now we can go to create menu data model. Here we can write the queries. We'll be able to write queries over here. Now we are going to write uh, the query SQL query. We can choose any name, source uh, human capital management data source. I'm writing first query, select uh, star from for all people of the table name, which contains the employee information, where person number. Now we'll be able to find these details here. Go to data, view the record, and we can find a table view here. This is our person ID, that is the primary key. Effective start date from today, and effective end date, and start date of the record. And we'll find who columns here. So what is meant by who columns? Whenever we are working with the ERP applications, we'll find the employees will log in and try to create a new record. Immediately it takes, if you create a new record, which user has created that record at what time? In case, if you update existing record, last update date and last updated by. Okay, so today, we have created record, that's why the system took it as this uh, date and also current uh, login username and same thing record as created today. So obviously it is taking last update date date and last update date by also today. And last update login we don't find in every you know table, only in a few tables we'll find. It means uh, when did you log into the applications last time into the database that will have some ID, but we don't need actually this column. Generally, who column means four columns created by creation date, last updated by last updated. This four columns will tell us the history of the record. When I say history of the record, when it has been completed and which record it has been completed, we'll find the history of this information. Here it is. Now go to diagram here and we are going for edit data and for all people have this is the information. I don't have employee name information here. See? Even if we scroll it, if I go to table view, it will show all the columns. See? We don't have employee name anywhere here. We don't have employee name anywhere. But if I go for uh, tree view, only the data, whatever the columns are having data, those columns will be displayed here. Those columns are displayed over here it is. Okay. Now, I don't have employee first name or last name or full name. We would like to retrieve that. Employee names will find uh, in another table. So what we can do is uh, person ID is the link between these two tables. Select star from person names underscore F where person ID, you can write sub-query here, select person ID from so-and-so table here, we can retrace and get all this information. Now the sub-query is going to return person ID. Based on that, we are going to get outer query, employee information. So here I can see that person ID here, I'm able to find the records. This record has been created. And what is the employee name here? This is the employee name. I can see there are two names. One is name type as US, another one is a global. Name type as US, another one is global name. Whatever the name we have, global name we are going to specify. So that's why whenever we are writing the queries, when in, in applications, we'll find person name ID. This, this ID is different. See, 4243 is there and this is 4244. You have two records. Okay. We will be using global name type. We are not going to use the particular legislation like US. Okay. So global name and local name, two names will be there, right? In case if we make any changes here, it will automatically reflect in our uh, database also. 
in our database table also we'll find here. Let me go back to here. Go to person management. Search with person number. I'm trying to make some changes in this record. I'll go to task list here. Go to person information. We can make the changes in personal details. Here, person information we have. Person information means we can try to update this details, national identifier. If at all you would like to go for change the date of birth, home address, or any other information, we can go for change. Here it is. Here we can change. For example, we are trying to make, if I go for correction mode, it will overwrite the record. So I'm going to remove this suffix. Press OK. Save and close. Click done button. Close. I will see that in the database table. So because it is still there, it takes some time just to go for make some changes in the query here. Now we can find that same query. Last time it was in approval process, now it's completed. Now if we search for the record, whatever the information we have updated, like what we have done, we have removed a suffix in correction mode. It will overwrite the record. So we don't find a suffix here. Suffix is null value. We can find suffix was null value. Okay. So the same information, whatever we are going to do, we will go for update this person information in update mode. Right now we are done in correction mode. If we do it correction mode, what happened? System will overwrite the existing record. Now, if I go to person details, and let's say we have prefix as uh, doctor. Now I would like to go for update some other uh, fields here. Go for edit. I'm going for update mode. Update mode means it will create a new record. So I'm going to say that from 20th November, this employee name, we would like to make it as prefix as instead of dr, I would like to make it as so after suffix These details I would like to go for update from November 20 onwards and save this. After that, we have to go for submit. Go for submit. Now we, we did this in update mode. So the information, whatever we have done, it will not be reflected immediately available from 20th November into the database. Now go back to our database here. And if we query the database records, now I can see that four records are there four records we have. See that this information, whatever we have specified, this is suffix and this is our uh, prename. So it's a, it's created, system has created, uh, we can just to choose the name type as global or US. Now 
Now, what we have to see that here is, if we look at here in, in update mode, we said from 20th, from 20th effective start date here and effective end date. See, the second record is valid from 20th November 2020, right? It's valid from 20. So immediately it takes 19th November 22 is the last date. So as we discussed in our previous session, I think you can go through my previous uh, video. There I have explained correction mode and update mode. Here we can see that. The moment whenever you say that uh, this information should be eligible from 20 November, immediately it took 19th November 2022 is the end date. So you have two records in the database table, but in the front end, when you search the current record, whatever is active, that will be displayed. For example, today is uh, 15th November, right? So when I search in the front end, I can see only the 15th November, whatever information is uh, valid. We don't find other information here. We don't find other information. As per 15th November, whatever person information is there, that will be displayed. If I go to person tab, now I can see that here. I don't find this uh, information which we have updated. That is valid when you search the record with 20th November and future date. For example, here you have to choose 20th. Now it will get that active record, whatever that, see Dr. Mukund calling, full name we got, right? Like that, whenever we try to modify the record, if you want to maintain the history, we'll go for update mode. If you want to go for overwrite the value, you can see that correction mode. So I did correction mode previous. That time we didn't see any record in the database table. The existing record has been updated by the system. It has overwritten. But the next time what I've done is, I went with the update mode. So in update mode, what happened? System will create a new record. System will create a new record, whatever the date you are specifying. Then existing record, whatever is there, immediately it will go for uh, set the last date as this. So by 19th November is the last date for this record. 20th onwards, this information is going to be displayed in your application. This. So that is effective start date and effective end date. This is very, very important when we are working in human capital management. We don't find this effective start date, effective end date. Generally, we'll find for some of the records, but not for every maintaining the history. We don't find only for human capital management modules. This day track, we call this as a day track concept. This day track concept will be there. Okay, so I'll, I'll also take one more example in the next video. It will make you more clear how it will work. Okay, thank you. Please subscribe for our channel and please refer anyone is looking for training and placement, any of these technologies. We are going to do it 100% please. Thank you.